Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we are going to be looking at how to calculate the efficiency of a chiller. Now, why might we want to know this? Well, chillers are actually pretty expensive to run. So you want to make sure that the chiller is running at its optimal performance. The way to check that is to do some calculations on the chiller efficiency. A very low efficiency means you're getting very little output for your money. And a very high efficiency means that you're getting a lot of value for your money. So it's, it's a good calculation to perform on your chiller at different loads. And also if you have multiple chillers, test them all at different loads to see which one is the most efficient and run that as the main one at that peak. So chiller efficiency is measured in COP. The COP stands for coefficient of performance. And really the COP or the COP is the ratio of how much refrigeration you get per unit of electricity that you put in and that's into the compressor and the controls and everything that goes with it. Really all the electricity that goes into that chiller and how much refrigeration you get out of that chiller. Now the formula for this one is very simple. The COP is just the uh, division of the kilowatts of refrigeration divided by the kilowatts of electricity. So we're going to do the calculations on this and we're going to have a look at both the metric and imperial and uh, the formulas and calculations for that. Now the first part or well, the second part of the, uh, the formula that we need is the electricity in and that's measured in kilowatts. Now that's very easy to get hold of. You just put on uh, a meter maybe from your BMS or on the head end of the, uh, the control panel you should be able to read them from so many of these. Um, otherwise, you can put on some temporary metering and actually uh, grab these numbers. And the electricity in the, the power consumption by this unit will vary by the amount of load that's pressed onto this compressor. So uh, as, the, as the refrigerant or the, the cooling effect or the cooling load of the chiller changes, so will the load on the compressor and that will be driven by the motor. So uh, that will vary. So you want to keep a log of that. Now the second part you need, or the first part in this equation, is the refrigeration effect. So how much cooling are you getting out of this chiller? Um, now we want the units in kilowatts, but uh, obviously the imperial units will be in BTUs per, per hour. Don't worry about that. We will, we will uh, calculate all this in just a second. If you don't know how to calculate this, then I highly recommend uh, you check out our other video just before this, which is how to calculate the chiller cooling capacity, the cooling load, kilowatts, BTUs, and refrigeration ton. And uh, through this, you can see I'll run through the entire calculation step by step in both uh, metric or MERTIC, as I've written there by mistake. Um, and I'll also explain what we need and how we get the calculations. And we'll also run these through in Imperial as well. So back to the calculation for this one. So for the metric side, it's just very easy. We're just going to drop in the number. So how much cooling effect are we getting out there? The refrigeration effect out. Uh, we'll put that at the top of the division and then we'll also put the amount of electricity going into the machine as well. And on the imperial side, first of all, we want to convert that from BTUs per hour into kilowatt hours. That's very simple to do. You just divide uh, your BTUs per hour by 3,412.142. Do that and you'll see it comes out exactly the same as 2,500 kilowatts. So uh, if you also put these numbers in as well, and then simply do the division and you'll see that the uh, COP comes out at 5.4. That's very good, that's really very good. So what this means is that for every one kilowatt of electricity that you put in, you will get 5.4 kilowatts of cooling out. So there you go, you get five times your money's worth of electricity out in cooling. So like I said, the COP of a chiller will actually vary throughout uh, the, the amount of load that's placed on there. So throughout the year and throughout the day as well. Uh, unless you've got a constant load, then uh, it will be where, where it is on there. So, um, And there is a difference in the COP compared to a constant speed chiller or a variable speed chiller. Variable speed chillers are uh, more... Uh, more much more efficient usually because um, it's in normal buildings it's actually quite rare that a chiller would operate at uh, certainly towards the the end towards the hundred percent most of the time it's operating at part load so it's only going to be you know a few days per year um, when 
Chida would actually be operating in you know this kind of spectrum over here. Uh, the majority of the time, it's going to be somewhere around here. So if you have a variable speed chiller, then it's going to be much more efficient. This is the, the plot of, uh, this is, uh, sorry, I should have put this on the side, but it's coefficient of performance down the side here. And uh, along the x-axis, we've got the descent of load on the chiller. So uh, you can see here that at uh, around 50% load on the variable speed chiller, in this case, it does vary by manufacturer, but at 50% load is when we're going to have our highest. So it could even be somewhere around uh, COP of nine. However, as you go further into uh, the load, as the load increases, maybe in the, the peak of summer or something like this, and we're, we're approaching kind of 90% load on the chiller, then you can see the COP becomes a lot lower and it's, it's maybe a COP of seven. Whereas the constant speed chiller, which is the standard chiller you would normally get, uh, especially the old ones, they'll be like this unless they've been retrofitted. You can upgrade your, your chillers, speak to your manufacturer or service provider. Um, but these ones will provide much more um, efficient or economical performance the higher, the greater the load that is placed on them. So uh, you can see here, kind of uh, 90 to 100 percent load is when it reaches its peak performance. Um, but that's only around, you know, 8 percent. And uh, at normal load during the normal time of the year, it's probably going to be, you know, 40 to 60 percent, so somewhere around there. So you may be getting around uh, a co coefficient of performance of around six. So that is the video on how to calculate the coefficient of performance and how efficient your chillers are. Do remember that you can upgrade some of your chillers, and really, uh, if you if you have a normal building like an office type building, uh, and you are in certainly the northern hemisphere then uh, maybe parts of the southern hemisphere then you want to consider installing a variable speed drive on the compressor and speak to your manufacturer or service provider for that all right that is the end of this video thank you very much for watching i uh, i hope that helps and you enjoyed it please don't forget to like subscribe and share and if you have any questions leave them down in the comment section below don't forget to check out our website theengineeringmindset.com and once again thank you very much for Thank you very much for watching and please check out our website, theengineeringmindset.com.